In a recent press conference, Yuri Slavkovsky has said that his knee is officially at 100%, plus he dives into what his expectations are for next year and some of the crazy developments he's had this summer. I'll be getting into that, plus David Reinbacher's status and whether he might make the NHL this year or head back to Switzerland. And finally, is having too many centers a problem? We'll be discussing all that on this edition of Habs Digest. So stick around for it. Because we're diving right back into Uri Slavkovsky. And before we get into this, a quick reminder to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Like, only about 30% of you guys, not even actually, maybe like 20% of you guys watching are subscribed. Especially in recent videos. So hit the button now. It'd be really appreciated. But not going to spend too much time on that. Let's take a look at what Uri said. So, 420 Scope It. What an awesome Reddit username. They translated the Slovak press conference. And uh, yeah, I got some excerpts. But the main thing we want to talk about is this question. Since your knee injury in January, you took a long break from hockey. How are you health-wise? He said, before I left Montreal, I skated. My knee was already feeling good and it was getting better. Now, it's 100%. I think I've got enough of a record from previous years as well. He said he hasn't been going on the ice every day, but he plans to add more and more and more on-ice activity as the season's coming up. And you have to expect that he'll be ready for the start of the season. And this is awesome news, right? Just recently, just not even a week ago, I think Caden Gooley went on a radio interview and said he's now 100%. So it's, it's really cool to see all these guys getting healthy at the same time, at the right time, with just about not even a month, right, until training camp kind of starts. Um, Uri Slavkovsky also in this interview said that Habs management contacted him and they wanted him to go back to Montreal for August 1st. So that is very, very soon. We'll see if we'll see him around the city sometime soon, but... Other than this amazing injury news, they got to ask him some more interesting questions, some more personal ones. I kind of left out of it. You know, how's his family doing this kind of stuff? But uh, take a look at these. I think you might be interested. They said, are you stronger than last year? He said, last year I did three pull-ups. Now I'll do six. I should be stronger. I can see it on my body. The tests also showed it. I have lost weight somewhere and gained weight somewhere. He said he would have done a flat stage of the Tour de France. But again, the interesting thing we've spoken about is lung capacity. Take a look at what he says here. He went for a test with a bicycle. This part we didn't know before. It came out I had a worsened lung capacity, which is like kind of bad news, right? You don't want to hear that. But anyway, let's continue. They explained to me that if I wanted to improve the first three steps on the ice, which is definitely what he was lacking last year, he had to have more lung volume and he worked with this amazing machine. And he said, by some miracle, I've increased my lung capacity 15 to 20% in a month and a half. And no one really understands how. Like, that is insane, right? Like, I know, we're rehashing this for the third, fourth time, but the fact that Slavkovsky himself is saying this, like, not only is he saying that, like, yeah, this training has been really helping me, I've lost weight, like, I've lost fat, probably he's gained a bit of muscle, he's in more NHL shape, his lung capacity is better, he's able to do more pull-ups, whatever that, you know, actually correlates to on the ice, but... He's really, really listening to the advice and feedback he's getting from people all over, right? They said, hey, your first three strides are not that great. You need better lung volume. He says, okay, I'll just increase my lung capacity by 20% in a month and a half. Is that good? And they said, what? And so it worked out really well, right? So he is just doing, again, doing everything right. That's the title of this subsection, but we're not even done there. I mean, with the injury update being amazing, Uri Slavkovsky doing the proper training he needs to do in the off season, we still have more to talk about. They asked him, I just thought this answer was so mature from him, right? In your rookie season, the Canadian fans were lenient on you. In your second season, there'll be more pressure on you. Are you ready? He said, I'm sure they'll expect more from me. I'm already counting on that, but I believe I'm very well prepared and I can play hockey. When the team didn't do well, the fans took it harder. On the other hand, it's nice when things are going well and everybody's cheering for us. I believe it will only go up and there will be less criticism. Have you set any goals you'd like to achieve? And he said, I have goals, but I'd like to keep them to myself. I'll work on them in the meantime. And, like, it doesn't get more mature than that. He's like, oh, yeah, I, they should expect more out of me. I'm going to show more. But my goal is, like, I'm not going to tell you. I'll work on them, on them in the meantime. I don't need to go out saying, oh, I'm doing this to get better. I'm just going to work on myself, and I'll prove it to you with my play on the ice. So, Uri Slavkovsky, he's fully healed from his injury. He's going to slowly ramp up on ice activity. His training this offseason shows incredible maturity and humility, which was what we also heard from the coaches over there, saying that he's doing everything he needs to to get better. He's lost weight. And three, he's like, yeah, the fans should expect more out of me. His responses are just so mature. And he's still like, what, 18, 19 years old. He's super young. So, I mean, he's just doing everything right. I feel like we could talk about him for days. But, uh, well, I have to cut it off for him now. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this whole URI situation because it sure seems like everything's going in the right direction. Topic two today is another young hab not officially, I guess, a hab yet, even though he was drafted. He still needs to play a game for him, but that's David Reinbacher, the fifth overall pick from the 2023 NHL draft. The surprise fifth overall pick by the Montreal Canadiens. 
And most people, when he was drafted, said he's maybe one of the more NHL-ready prospects, but he definitely still has some more to learn. And recently, in a Swiss article, it's written in English, but it's from SwissHockeyNews.ch, if he makes it to the NHL right away, we're very happy for him. And if not, we're enormously happy to have him in Clotten for another year. Larry Mitchell, the team manager of EHC Clotten. And so this is interesting. Now, a lot of people, when they saw this, at least in the comments that I saw, people discussing it, they were kind of saying, well, why does it have to be the NHL or Switzerland? I don't think that's what Larry's saying. I think it could also be AHL, as in Laval. Uh, I think he just means the NHL organization, as in the Montreal Canadiens. But regardless, it's a very interesting question, right? You really have to balance it with someone like David Reinbacher, who, guys, just remember, in the same league that Roman Yossi came up in, Roman Yossi, of course, being a Norris-winning defenseman and scoring like point-per-game seasons, Reinbacher has a higher point production in the same league at the same age. So Reinbacher could very well be NHL ready, but I still think he has maybe a little bit more to go when it comes to maybe his skating, his positioning, even gain a little bit of size. He's still amazing. Like, I'm not saying they're weaknesses, but there's always things you can improve, especially when you're very young like he is, right? So I still think going back to Switzerland is the best bet. Play pro hockey there where you're going to have a very big role and play well. The issue with the Habs right now is the log jam on defense because if he comes to the Habs organization right now, you have one of two things happening. You have him playing low tier in the defense and then you have to wave someone like Jonathan Kovacevic or play Arbor Jacki in Laval the whole year, something weird like that, just to have David Reinbacher playing like bottom pair minutes. Or you force David Reinbacher up the lineup to maybe the second pairing with Caden Gooley or even the top pairing with Matheson, and then you're forcing other guys down who don't need to be gone down, and Reinbacher's rushed. So, And Laval, yeah, I get it. I get the, the point that people are saying, oh, get him used to the North American ice. Like, that's a big thing. We, we saw that was a weakness for Slavkovsky. Well, it's not necessarily a weakness for everyone. David Reinbacher does not seem like the player that will struggle with that. His, his ability to judge gaps and to step in at the right time defensively, that's what kind of shows that he will be able to adjust to a smaller ring size. Like, I know the muscle memory's not there, but his instincts are. So, I and plus the AHL's really, really rough, and it's not very kind to young players. They get beaten up and bullied all the time. So I think going back to Switzerland is the best idea for, for this coming season, and his Swiss club, Cloten, seems to think so too. But uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think, because... I just see him going back to Switzerland. Let him play another pro year. There's no rush to bring David Reinbacher to the Montreal Canadiens, especially not this year. So give him some time. Let him develop. We'll see him down the line. Final thing today, it's sort of rehashed from, from what we've talked about before, but there was an article today specifically saying that the Habs straight up have way too many centers, and that's a quote from the article. And they go on to list all these Habs centers. And, you know, it kind of is an issue. So let's just take a look, right? Natural centers, Nick Suzuki, Kirby, Doc, Sean, Monahan, Jake Evans, Christian Dvorak, Alex Newhook, Rem, Pitlick. That's seven centers. So what do you do with this? You have to shift some to the wing. You have to maybe trade some out. Here's what I would do, right? I, I'm a big believer that Christian Dvorak will get moved before the season. But let's say he doesn't, okay? Let's say Christian Dvorak doesn't get moved. You scratch Rem Pitlick. You send him down to Laval. You risk him being picked up on waivers. I'm a big Rem Pitlick guy, but... He's kind of the odd one out, don't you think? Jake Evans is the fourth line center. He's proven that. I don't think there's any need to get rid of him. Because, um, you know, people are like, oh, Christian Dvorak may be better. But if you play Christian Dvorak as a fourth line center role and you move someone like Jake Evans, then you're paying your fourth line center four and a half million dollars. It doesn't really work. So you're better off trying to move Dvorak. And if you really want to fix this situation, you play either Doc or Monaghan on the wing. I personally think it'll be Doc as second line center with Monaghan on his wing and maybe even Newhook on the other. So that eliminates three of these centers down into one line. Um, some people have Doc on the top line with something like Anderson, Monaghan, and Newhook on the second line. There's a lot of possibilities. So is having too many centers a problem? It can be. But if you're the Montreal Canadiens and you have the versatility of these guys who a lot of them can play wing, like again, even if you keep all of these, you just scratch Rem Pitlick, your centers are Suzuki, what, you got Suzuki, Doc, or Suzuki, Monaghan, Evans, and Dvorak. You play Newhook on the wing. You play Monaghan or Doc on the wing. And that's a solution. So I think it's kind of a lot of nothing there. And even if you want to play Newhook or Doc more long-term down the middle, you can just ship off Dvorak. Or you could, you know, there might be an injury or something to give him that opportunity. So I don't think it's a big issue, but uh, I understand why it might be a concern. That'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We just passed 6,500 subs. We really appreciate all the support. I've been your host, Josh Goss. We'll catch you in the next one.